Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to tonight's tournament. It is the UMG $200 minimum 4v4 variant. Taking place here on May 3rd. And in our round one matchup, starting things off hot tonight, we've got C2C facing off against Mazer. Hopefully, you guys have had a, a fantastic week. Been a lot of Call of Duty action, some drama going down in the scene recently. You got patch updates. Apparently, the new recently added weapon isn't the greatest anymore. We got to see a little bit of that from uh, Dashi and Co. last week. So, new meta, kind of, at least as far as certain weapons are considered. But we are starting off round one with a very hype match, must I say, for a number of different reasons. I've actually kind of composed a little bit of a, uh, a treasure map, it looks like, on my notes here. Based off of how these teams have faced off against each other and prior teammates that we actually have in this current match. So Brack recently ends up kind of leaving the forfeit gaming lineup. They end up having a solid placement. Uh, I think they ended up finishing like top 28 at Seattle. He played alongside of M. Ruiz, Reviction, and Drama. Notice, funny enough, Drama is actually on the other team. So a little bit of a rivalry potentially developing there. Both teams splitting apart, or both players rather splitting apart from the organization and now are finding themselves on different teams for tonight at least. I know uh, Brack on the more consistent organization, C2C, like is it a team, is it not? I'm not 100% sure, but it's at least a group of players who are playing alongside one another. Along with that, Brack has also teamed up with Hitman and Jet Li in the past on a team known as Vex Gaming, where they would go on to win three or almost four tournaments in a row for our Thursday night tournament. So they were on an absolute roll. They split apart for God knows what, what reason. And uh, like I said, the team splits apart. They kind of move on. And like I said, that from there, Brack would move on to forfeit gaming. So Brack has played against most of these guys. And uh, once Jet Li and Hitman and Brack and all those guys from Vex Gaming split apart, um, yeah, they end up forming a little bit of a team uh, or, uh, with Major Manic and Jet Li. They end up forming on a team, uh, I forget, I think it was called One Mind at Seattle. They end up having a top 40 placement alongside of Teddy Rex and Rambi, which is three-fourths of the X lethal A lot of information I know I'm throwing at you right now. But we've got a lot of players who have played in the past. Uh, like I said, mostly Hitman and Jet Li and Major Maniac and Jet Li. And then Brack has basically faced off against the other whole team, essentially, uh, at one point so far through throughout World War II, but it should be a pretty hype matchup. I was so, so happy when the old Vex team picked up Hitman and had uh, Brack on the exact same team because those two guys can absolutely take over matches. So I'm really looking forward to watching those two players from their respective lineups face off against each other. Brack, incredibly solid STG44 guy. He is just one of the better kind of top AM AR players that we have in the, in the entire game. I would kind of consider him even a semi-pro, even though I don't see him in the uh, semi-pro league or the uh, national circuit, rather. But incredibly solid player. And alongside of him, we have Mr. Zaptius. I have been watching this guy play a lot throughout World War II. And over the last, I would say, maybe month, month and a half, he has just been on a tear. Like, unbelievably going off countless times. He was a part of a uh, big swing that they've had. Uh, and I think it's, it's like a tournament we had two weeks ago, and he was just dropping like 40 bombs each hard point and was really going off. So I, I think when it comes down to pure slaying, this old Mazer gaming team, which is three-fourths of this roster, they pick up Brack in place of Glow Frosty. This team was incredibly solid at their overall hard point game. I remember watching the old Vex team, who was known for winning back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back tournaments, face off against Mazer and Hardpoint. And they were just getting dismantled. Mazer was just on a different level in hard points. So adding a solid AR like Brack to your team, which Will Frosty was a very solid player in himself, but you know, adding a guy like this to the team, I think is only going to make their response even more terrifying. And I think in last week's tournament as well, they played very, very well in search and destroy. So this is a very well versed Mazer gaming lineup. They're my favorite to take this um, you know, current match that we have. But you also got to look take a look at C2C. You've got very well-known search and destroy players being Hitman, Major Maniac, Jet Li, even Drama uh, at some points known for their search and destroy gameplay. Very, very solid talent. So I'm very hyped, <laughs> it's fair to say, for this exact matchup. I know we kind of went on a uh, little bit of a journey trying to gather all the info uh, regarding this roster, or really both rosters and their history with one another. But it's definitely a very star-studded matchup when it comes down to semi-pro talent. And uh, with Major Maniac leading the way, actually, at 10 and 7 right now for his team. He's got four kills in a row. Ends up getting taken down, and Hitman and Drama will kind of pick up the pace as they're going to go and grab at least a few more of these seconds. But a full four man push getting ready to be granted here from the boys on Mazer. Gizmo, Zappy is falling, but Brack is still holding on valiantly as his teammate Fado just alongside of him holding hands. It looks like they find three kills, and there is the fourth. Three of those coming all from Fado. And so also be grabbing the scrap time and putting the boys from Mazer in a fantastic position. They were down, 
and it looked to be a little bit grim, but kind of a 2v4 situation here on Forest. Well, now give the, them the advantage heading in toward Ruins. And of course, after losing that rotation, we do see the boys from C2C resetting and ready to go is Jet Li. Sitting and lingering as he'll find two kills in a row, three in total. And one thing that I've been watching from, from Jet Li so far throughout this game, I really got to see it whenever he joined uh, alongside Vex, was just this man's kind of clutch ability. Like, whenever his team really needs him to go off, that's immediately when he shows off. Whenever the team needs a, a rebound and search and destroy it, needs someone in the hard point, kind of plays when in pass was the, you know, kind of optic karma role. When, whenever the team was down and they just needed some type of swing, someone should just go off, right? Back at IW, there were times where the team was just a little bit down, they needed another X Factor, and Karma would always show up. I kind of compare that to the same way that Jet Li likes to play, meaning that he likes to kind of focus around the objective, he's going to have his hand, or his foot rather, in that quite often, but when he needs to go off, man, he's always ready to do that, and is also one of the better snipers that we have in the game as well. So when it comes into Search and Destroy, make sure to be watching out for Jet Li. He's got some pretty, uh, pretty solid moves with that, but... Looking back into the game, it looks like a little bit of an advantage right now for our red side, which is C2C. And with them not currently holding the spawns, that could quickly change, though. But Brack has to go big. This is a huge fight for him. And the streaks are going to try to supply a little bit of support as the nades, tacticals, lethals all being tossed throughout those corners. Zappy is coming big with, with two. Goes for the Dolphin Dive and Fatal forgets how to shoot. And Major Maniac says thank you for the free two-piece. Regardless of finding that, the spawns will be favoring the boys from Mazer. So solid plays. The streak actually comes in to help Brack out. And they'll hold on to the spawns along with the remaining time inside a bunker. So big plays coming out from Mazer in that particular portion. Great communication obviously leading to them grabbing a majority of those scrap points. As back and forth we've gone. And it looks like for now... Rotation being underway for East Road. Granted, when it comes to the East Road, it's not necessarily the more preferred hard point to hold. But, uh, you know, you can grab some scrap points. I mean, you can grab some seconds from here to there. But generally, this is where the nades come out. This is where the streaks start to come out. I think from either spawn, I end up seeing a video. I think it was from Exclusive Ace whenever the game just uh, had first came out. And I think he made a video basically saying that within like three seconds of spawning from either side, whether it's bridge or uh, kind of through that back bell area, you can immediately throw a stun within three seconds of your spawn, at the very least. So, you're, like I said, it's fair to say when it comes to the East Road, we're going to be seeing quite a bit of explosive activity uh, on this particular road. It's not one that I'd like to venture on anytime soon. But it looks like as three players fall, a ton of blue involved in the kill feed, it looks like they are going to be holding down that time is Mazer, getting very, very close to that 100 and 60 second mark. As the second set of rotation should be good to go when you see Gizmo and Co. ready and set up a big gunfight. Actually goes the way of Major Maniac as he's now 26 and 16. Really this entire lobby I've been able to cast over them play, playing quite a bit. I would say ex except for Drama, I haven't been able to watch him play too much. But of course very familiar with him even uh, kind of during the Black Ops 3 times. But uh, watching it over Major Maniac, when he was playing on Lethal Gaming, this guy just was ahead of everyone when it came down to the FG42 meta. He was rocking that gun in the early bar days, uh, whenever you know people were kind of experiment experimenting with what assault rifle was best. He was just going off and being one of the most, most solid AR players that we have in our UMG tournaments. And obviously he is showing that off right now. Six kills in a row, nine as a team right now for C2C as they've taken back the lead. And with that, they will have streaks as well, looking very, very solid. And off the back of Major Maniac's play, has the glide bomb in his pocket. You see him already being aware of that rotation. Granted, they're okay with awarding that last 12 seconds. They want to be here. They want to grab this time here inside of Ruins. And along with that kill, Major Maniac does end up earning that artillery barrage as well. So solid plays coming out here. If you're a fan of C2C, things are definitely looking up. Despite not having the advantage... It's definitely looking solid, but not if Gizmo can ruin the party. Tries to come on the flank, but Hitman is ready and waiting for him there. And it looks like one player is going to be on the flank right now. Zapius quickly gets shut down and taking a very brief look at the squirt guard in the top right as far as major performers at the moment. You see, like I said, Major Maniac 34 and 18 right now for C2C, along with Jet Li 27 and 24. And it looks like Gizmo picks up the so one of the easiest two pieces of the day, but can't find the second. And along with uh, Mazer right now, you see 26 and 27 out of Brack, 23 and 24 out of Zaptius, but not really 
too many all-star performers right now. It's kind of a matter of the slang definitely favoring C2C at the moment. But it's off the back of Major Maniac's play. 35 and 18. Still has a glide bomb to work with. And this is the worst hard point to try to take back over if you're Mazer. This is a AR's paradise if you're in Maniac shoes. But as the glide bomb will come down, trying to delay the forces here for Mazer, as these boys need to get in the hard point quick and fast. Smoke gets tossed, start trying to limit the vision. And here they come. One player, though, lingering inside of Fire Alley. That's going to be drama. Fatal makes it in. And as the streaks start to come through, Fatal is just on the opposite side of this hill, trying to do any damage that he possibly can. It looks like he will fall quickly. Hitman is there to respond as well. And it looks like the spawns are in favor yet again of C2C. This is dangerous territory. Treacherous waters to be trekking in right now if you are Mazer, but it looks like they will be granted a few of these seconds. A huge fight taking place as they've got to get this time. Gizmo takes out his own teammate. He falls quickly also, and I believe there's not going to be enough time in Bunker for the game to end. It will be very, very close, however. But if you're Mazer, here is the time for the comeback. Granted, it's not going to be easy. You do have spawns. However, it is East Road. It's not a highway to be messing with. It's not one that you can rely on. And if the smokes, the utility gets to be tossed out. It's time to set up shop. If you're Mazer, what do they have in store? Can they bring this one back? Two players from the left side end up taking them down. Brack, the last man of defense has to go big here. Takes down one and is trying to wait as long as he can for his teammates here. Takes another one down onto Drama. He doesn't have the weapon to try and respond inside a cave, but it looks like he ends up taking down three. Along with that, Gizmo was there. Zapdius responds, and he'll win the 1v1 engagement only for a short time. Drama should be here, and just like that, the game should be done. One more second needed, and just like that, that will be game one in the books. Over toward the boys on C2C. Granted, it was a slobber knocker, as JR used to say, but very... Intense match, a lot of slang, obviously, but no better than Major Maniac. 43 and 22, incredibly solid showing from this man. Of course, the ex-lethal slash ex-one bind player plays very solid, of course, with that typical assault rifle in his hands. As far as the AR battle, right? You talk about Major Maniac, you talk about Brack. 10 kill advantage toward Major Maniac, 10 kill disadvantage toward Brack. So just overall, incredibly Huge difference when it comes down to that time. I mean, really, 41 seconds to Brack, 38 for Major Maniac. Not a whole lot to be noticing, but when it comes to the AR category, Brack definitely kind of gets a, a little bit owned, essentially, there in that first HP. But taking a quick look at our hardpoint breakdown, it looks like Cave ended up favoring the boys on Mazer, 91 to 57. But take a look at Ruins, man. Unreal difference that we see. 94 to just 12 seconds. There were a number of different times, whether it was first or in or second rotations, where the guys on C2C ended up having those streaks. We talked about the second set of rotations. It was a Major Maniac who went on like a six kill spree. He ends up rotating very early after already having a glide bomb and an artillery barrage in his back pocket. So, Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the UMG $200 minimum 4v4 variant. Of course, myself, Landon Lando Sanders, live here from the UMG studio, joined alongside by Taylor hey. Noble Reflections, uh -huh. underscore II Taylor. Showed up a little bit late. No worries. Fashionably late. You, you know what? If I, if I was on time, there'd be something wrong with me, okay? You know, right. you got to show up late every once in a while. But it's, I'm not going to make a habit of it. I'm going right. to being, I'm gonna start being on time from now on. But we got a great matchup going on between C2C and Mazer. C2C wins that first hard point, 250 to 200. But we've seen Mazer in the past. Usually that first hard point in the tournament, they struggle a little bit, but they pick it up in the tournament uh, as it goes along. But already we're seeing a bomb plant go down. Drama planning that 3v3 situation. Talk to me, Landon. What can we expect now? Uh, one thing to be looking at, though, for sure is going to be fatal. What the two guys on the red side, of course, being Mazer, are waiting for, both Brack and Gizmo, are waiting for this flank to come through. Once they can find a kill, here comes the challenge. Here come those two red arrows, both Brack and Gizmo. Here comes the two, and now Jet Li is last alive. Thankfully, he has the bomb resting next to him, but the defuse could be coming in at any moment. One versus three. Perfect mm. flank, to say the least. Coming in from fatal. Along with he and Brack, they finish off with the ace combined. And uh, that, that was just phenomenal execution, right? You have two players on one side. You're just waiting for that pinch to come through. First initial kill comes in. Brack with the AR range through middle. And like I said, the one versus three situation not going to work out very well for Jet Li. But overall, that pinch 
was worked out fantastic for Mazer. You know, I've watched Mazer several times. They've been uh, uh, quite a normal appearance in our tournaments that we've had here. And uh, one of the things that they picked up a couple weeks back was Brack, uh, who replaced one of the players that I, I remember seeing. And Brack was a great pickup. I mean, he was on Team Vex. They've won three tournaments in the past, uh, at least for UMG playing. Yeah. Uh, and, and Brack obviously showing off this first round, coming out guns blazing. He gets two kills, uh, no deaths, and then he comes out even with the bomb plant. We'll see if he can continue that momentum as we're currently on board with them as uh, some frags going out. Looking like they're pushing A, and this seems like to be the normal thing uh, as uh, the new updates have progressed. A bomb side is the most favorite at this uh, time, but Jet Lee looks like he's one to, uh, you know, a little poke in a little there, but he actually does get taken out by Fatal, and now we got a 2v3. Yeah, and right now, if you're the guys on uh, Mazer at the moment, right, you got Fatal and Brack. Brack with a diffuse in that last round, both sitting around that, you know, kind of two around 300 score line between themselves, so they're looking pretty good for some streaks. Honestly, if you can kind of keep one of them alive, get Brack a, a bomb plan here, despite winning the round or not, they could be looking at a, a solid future when it comes down to the search and destroy after just two rounds of play, but they really have to be wary of Major Maniac. This man finished off, I believe, 43 and 22 in the first hard point, so his STG is shooting pretty solid, but so this top front position is the only thing that's going to be messing with this A bomb plant. Most teams are usually going to have a smoke to try to counter this strat, but the nice dolphin dive comes through from Brack, and he's going to have a free plant here, Taylor. Here we go. Still a 3v2, as we're going to see now the players of Major and Drama. Major getting dropped, actually. Drama now in a 1v3. Nice kill there. Taking out uh, Gizmo. Now he's going to have to push him. The players know where he's at. He, he's going to continue. Well, actually, it looks like now he's going to be going for street side. We'll see if he can uh, maybe sneak up on Brack and Fatal here in a 1v2. It's going to be a bit testy, though. With 25 seconds remaining, he's going on that flank, and he's got to pick up Fatal, who's currently to his right, and he looks like he wants to look that way, and he does commit, and he's wow. not able to get that kill. Fatal takes him out, and that's going to be a quick 2-0 now for the team of Mazer looking really good, and I know their search and destroy is phenomenal for them. Yeah, and, and one thing to notice, right? Fatal, he's 5-0. and zero. There's only been eight different kill opportunities so far throughout these last two rounds. He was involved with the flank that happened in the first round. He's the reason why that 3v3 works out for them. He ends up finding that huge kill on to, uh, I believe it was Major Maniac instead of Top Red in this last round, which really kind of opens up the bomb site, kind of frees up the plant to obviously be granted in their favor. And he also picks up the final kill in that round as well. So really, Fatal is playing lights out. And he's, he's at 5-0, and zero, right? But the kills that he's grabbing aren't just random kills. They're not just first bloods. He's finding big and huge Positional momentum kills. kills. Yeah, yeah really secure the round for his team. So big plays coming out for him. He's definitely the reason why. He has the stamp in these first two rounds toward the guys on Mazer. But it looks like two players drop nice and quick as Fatal, though. Sitting right now inside of top red has his teammate Zapdius to work with him. As a two versus four retake is not going to be looking uh, nicely done. But as the time starts to tick away, Zapdius thankfully does take down Jet Li, so it makes the man count at least a tad more even. But you see Fatal just waiting for the challenge. Major Manic is ready for his chance. Oh! Finally takes him down, and off of that, the 5-0 start, no streaks get earned from it. So Fatal, that's a huge loss that he ends up taking there. This is also going to be around toward the side of C2C, but we talked about, I was mentioning, you know, at the end of the second round, how this is a huge opportunity for Major to kind of get some streaks. They can kind of work on their economy, essentially, for the latter part of this game. That all gets destroyed in this last round. Yeah, he does, and it's really unfortunate. They needed those streaks pushing forward in the search and destroy round, and but that's a round that C2C needed. You def definitely want to don't don't want to be down 3-0 uh, as you continue into the game. So great round from C2C. Unfortunately for Fatal, he does get dropped, but we'll see if they can continue the momentum moving forward. As uh, let's go ahead and get on board with the. Uh, Let's actually, yeah, let's stay with Fatal. I mean, he's been tearing up this competition. Zap's going to take the bomb now. Normally it's Brack, but Zap, they're going to switch up roles a little bit. As we'll see what they're going to be up to. Overhead Ooh, view Jet coming Lee. in. Jet Lee getting really aggressive, pushing forward, and it pays off. He picks up another kill as Brack and Gizmo do go down, but unfortunately, Gizmo takes out Brack. Yeah. And that's going to be a big mistake now. Fatal and Zap in a 2v3 situation. And right now, their whole plan of pushing A is foiled, and they're going to have to push back. Oh. Zap, unfortunately, last alive gets taken out and all of a sudden we're seeing c2c another side of them coming out taking over two rounds back to back over mazer to tie up the game yeah and talk about a huge play coming out of jetly i know i really wanted to go to the sky cam really quick because i was talking about in the hard point jetly at random times can just absolutely go off for his team he's known for having a sniper rifle and search and destroy from time to time but he really kind of overall shows off his presence early on in that round. He totally catches the enemy off guard when they try to make that push toward A, along with potentially making them a little bit nervous. The nade kind of gets tossed out. They're probably caught off guard. 
you could honestly argue probably would have got the second kill. Kind of at least has an assistance with that teammate coming forward. So he ends up finishing off two kills in that last round, one at the beginning and obviously the one at the end. Huge plays coming in from him as he'll now have the bomb in his hands. Of course, the closest man to streaks trying to upgrade that with the bomb plant as uh, while Gizmo does get taken down for the first blood. Here comes the 3v4 retake. The smoke is through and the vision is currently blocked, but that's not stopping the boys from CTC from going off. Zaptius ends up taking down two players regardless, though. And now we find ourselves even at a two-to-two-man split. Zaptius oh, is going for the move. defuse. I Drama. Does he realize he's here? They don't see him. They don't see him. In fact, that, his teammate is, in fact, going to distract. There it is. that's going to allow Zap to get the bomb defuse. <laughs> wow. Right there, I thought Mazer was not going to get that run. I saw them all pushing through that gate area, all three of them. And I was like, no, don't do that because it's one central choke point. You can just get mowed down left and right. But Zap, with a great heads up play, goes through the smoke, dies behind the bomb, and gets that bomb defuse. And that's and something with that, that Mazer needed. And along with that, right, he opens up that entire bomb site by finding two kills. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. What, what, what more could you ask for out of Zap? Is and that round five opens up things with a two-piece after his teammate gets taken down and then literally just hops in the sneak defuse. It mean, just shows aggression. I oh, mean, yeah. It, it can pay off. If you know what you're doing, aggression is definitely the way to go about it. And now let's see. Uh, on board now with Major. Major currently five and two, but more importantly, he's on a four kill streak oh, in a gunfight. Now when he manages to get the assist, he doesn't get the full kill, wow. but still inching his way towards those streaks as the bomb is now going to be planted by Zap. No, he backs off of it. I think thinking players are around. There is a blue player up there looking to challenge a player in front, challenging as well. He has to back off, planting that bomb once again, and he does go down. And that's going to be C2C taking another round, as we're yeah. seeing. Uh, which, that was kind of weird for Mazer, because we've seen them push the A bomb site so much. But now they're kind of following in track of C2Cs, because C2C has been pushing that bomb site, and it's been working really well for them. Yeah. I, I think what really kind of halts that progression is that early kind of first blood A that comes out from Major Maniac. Those are ones that you really got to be aware of. We talk about the guys from C2C, right, known for search and destroy, right? The, the, all of these players are known for being search and destroy stars in their prior careers. Like maybe excluding drama as of recent, but uh, that prenate, just overall the knowledge that you get really kind of sets things up. And we talked about Major Maniac, right? He doesn't die in that last round. He was on that four kill spree, still continuing on with it. And uh, the closest man to streaks right now on this map, of course, they're going to give him the bomb, as rightly so. Jet Li, yet again, coming out with the nade, but Zapdius might have one as well. Oh, he's makes it. a little bit, or make Major Maniac a little bit weak, but Zapdius goes for the rush. And how close have oh, these players been getting it. towards streaks, man? This is unreal. Oh, but right now, a one is. versus one, Drama versus Gizmo. They both have an idea of to where each other is, but... A huge round right now. Winner of this 1v1 will have the advantage heading into round number eight. I like what I'm seeing. Gizmo's got to play a bit cautious here. Drama on the opposing side there. He's Drama doesn't know if he wants to plant that bomb or not or push for it, but Gizmo, he's just going to chill out a little bit. And it does look like Drama is going to pick up that bomb. Looks like he does want to rotate over towards B. And this, if I like this play. I do, I do like this yeah. play. If you're looking at Gizmo's position on that minimap, he has no idea. He's still looking A, and rightly so, right? I mean, you have to be thinking that, but now Drama is going to get a free plant. And the reason why I like this play, right, because Drama can kind of hide behind this bomb site. He has an idea. Like, he can at least have some cover if someone tries to challenge him. But you talk about that that A bomb site, a guy could be a top red. He could be kind of overall in that lookout post area. It's so open. It's so difficult to try to get like a plant down easily. So it's going to be a lot easier for Drama to kind of act like a playground. Like, it's kind of like, you know, swinging around in the monkey bars. Oh, like, there's so many different opportunities for him to try oh, to find no. this kill. <laughs> But the aggression shows too strong. Gizmo yep. is ready. Oh, shooting bodies. Yeah, fires a few extra shots in the head there. But I like that play. Like, it's not at all, uh, you know, uh, one that you'd not like to see anymore. But like, like I said, he kind of goes for a little bit of an aggressive rush, tries to kind of counterplay, go on a flank, be aware of where the enemy is. But yep. uh, unfortunate 1v1 loss there is now Mazer. Four to three. Yeah, Drama just misread him. He probably thought Gizmo, after he saw him in street, was pushing through the bottom of, uh, of the – the area, yeah, you know, but the area, yeah, the area, you know, what, the call outs, the back call red, out, back red. If that's but, what the one v one area, yeah, the back red. But unfortunately, Gizmo just he kind of didn't push through; he just stayed back and then read uh, drama correctly, and then was able to take out drama. So here we go, another push going forward. So I love these pushes on B, man. They've I, been I, very intense. Really aggressive, and I like them. And, and one player, I actually get on board with Zap if we can, please, because Zap has been that aggressive player that I've really enjoyed watching, and already in a gunfight as he's looking to take out uh, drama there. His drama is cooking a grenade, still shots fired, taking plenty of damage, but drama not going down, and bomb does get planted. Still all players up, Fatal, but two wow. players dropping. Fatal getting some nice kills there. Gizmo going down, Bracken zapped down. In response to two, though. 
back to back two pieces from either side. Wow. But uh, great performance. From <laughs> it's really hard to kind of call like what's exactly taking place. I mean, these have really kind of been momentum plays back and forth. We talk about the you know early game heroics from from different players. Jet Li's kind of you know early game. We talked about Fatal, who was having a fantastic start at five and zero. I mean. There's been like three different moments where guys have been 100 points away from streaks and just happened to die. So a lot of really big momentum plays really going down, I think it's fair to say. But you look at overall consistency right now. Fatal and Zaptius carrying the load, to say the least, both at eight kills for their side as they're now up five rounds to three. Jet Li and Co. from the side of C2C need to get some momentum back under themselves. They're going to give him the quick rush, give him the bomb, punch in the digits. He's one of the faster players on the C2C lineup. And here comes a little bit of a stalemate. Smoke gets tossed out. Brack opens things up with the first blood. That is huge on his counterpart, Major Maniac. And it looks like the nade gets tossed out as well from Jet Li. Him and Drama have to go big here. The last nice remaining kill. players, the Pillars right now in the search and destroy. Fatal misses a few bullets, but now it's Drama all oh, by himself. Nice one kill. versus one versus Fatal now. Back-to-back -back plays where the situation is exactly taking place. Fatal goes for the rush. He oh, has look at the pistol <laughs> in hand. And what he does there, you see the melee. He tries to go for the melee sure. dolphin dive whenever you're kind of – it's not like a glitch in, in World War II, but it makes you kind of delve a little bit faster. I'm not sure if that was on purpose, but what he's really trying to do is put himself behind the bomb site so Drama isn't aware of that. But the solid play from Drama in that situation kind of uses the bomb site toward his advantage. We talk about that back red 1v1 gunfight. Exact same scenario regarding these same two players. This time, though, it's Drama who wins out. And now we're heading into round number 10, and it's going to be the guys of Mazer on offense. So this could be a potential round 11 that we're looking at. You know, it absolutely could be 4-5 as C2C is unrelenting and not wanting to give up at this point. You know, Mazer has this game in their grasp, but... You know, that one round is, is is a lot to handle, especially going against a oh, solid team of C2C shots. and some shaky shots going down as Hitman does miss a little bit. Let's see if he can get this one. And he does connect enough to take out Zapius now for the 3 But situation. you don't see any, like, there's no smokes. Like, they're trying to make their way over to the A-bomb site. There's no there's no way to, like, block the vision. And I'm not sure if this is, like, they're trying to set up Brack for, like, a flank so they don't really want them to be super aware that a push is being made toward A or anything like that. But... Really, if you want to try to break into a bomb site, smoke should the name of the game. You have a guaranteed lethal, a guaranteed tactical in every one of your classes post patch. Why not use? Why not use the smoke? People talk about how stuns aren't useful in this game. Rock a smoke, man. Like toss it out. I, I'm not really sure the reasoning behind losing two players like that. Hitman basically has a, a free shooting range at two different players. Easily, if he if his shots are on for that first player, we're looking at a two v four. Seems like they're more aggressive with their smoke use on defense rather than offense, which is, yeah. is quite oh curious. God, and it has Brack. worked. And then great shots from Brack. Picking up that two piece now is Jet Li and Major going against uh, Gizmo and Brack. That could be, that could be good. Let's we'll see if Jet Li can pick up this kill here. Oh. No, he can't. Oh. What a kill from Gizmo. Oh. And now it's going to be a 1v2. Major trying to keep C2C alive. Bomb trying to go down. Gizmo does get shut down. He knows where the bomb is at. Yep, He's going to go play. ahead and dip out of there, and rightly so. And C2C is going to pick up another round here. And they're now going to be tied 5 5 against Mazer. Wow. This is a big round for them. They needed to win that. Now they're tied up. They win this. They're going to knock Mazer out of this tournament. C2C is going to move on. And Mazer is a strong team. So is C2C. It can oh, yeah. go either which way. Mazer, though, has had plenty of opportunities to take this victory over C2C. But like you said, they've been fumbling just a little bit. Smoke's a big deal. Uh, we've also seen their pushes a bit shaky. Shots a bit shaky. See if they can maybe compose themselves to take this round. Yeah, of course, we talked about the 5-3 to three advantage, right? The guys on Major Possessed, they're looking good. I thought the Game 3 CTF was all but going to happen. And now we find ourselves in Round 11. And granted, they're also going to be on the offense. They're not preferred of the two, but here comes the smokes. This is what I want to see, right? Limit the vision from both of those line sites. Hitman either has to rush through this smoke, or he's got to sit back here. They know exactly the corner that he's hanging in. Drops him for the first blood, and now they're in perfect position. And take a look at this. Play number six, Brack, on the flank. He could absolutely ruin any type of push like the boys from C2C drama. want to make. If Drama gets a little bit hyper-aggressive, he could be taken down at any there moment. And just like that, this is what I want to see, right? I talk about the smokes. You, you all, like, and all that separates this round from the last one yep. is the ability to toss out the smokes. Brack was in the exact same situation. It makes the enemy wary. It makes them a little bit nervous. Where do we rush? Hitman had a free corner to hang in to try to find those two kills in that last round. And this time, his vision is blocked. He has no visuals of that bomb, and it causes the enemy to get a little bit overly aggressive, especially in round 11s. Both teams are super wary of, like, what's going on. They don't want to lose the round 11. They don't really want to be the reason why their team ends up losing a map. In that situation, right, 
they kind of pick up what they messed up for Mazer. They win the round 11, and now we're seeing a, a map three CTF, which looked a little bit scary from time to time, right? They were up five to three, two rounds in a row go the way of C2C, but they clutch up here at the end, and obviously we see the final scorecard. Fatal finishing up 11 and nine, continues on from his early game heroics. And finishes off with the most kills in the entire lobby. You know, I loved watching Mazer play the Search and Destroy. I love their aggression. Like you said, once they use the smoke, perfectly fine. You know, looking at the board now, we're seeing on the Search and Destroy, I mean, it, was, it was just even. It was dead even throughout the rounds, okay? Even kill-wise, it was dead even. You see three diffuses. Like, that, see, that's, I, like from staring at that screen multiple times a week, it's mostly going to be skulls. <laughs> so it's right. kind of funny that we actually see three of the... Uh, kind of the fuse clippers there just because it just goes to show like how close a lot of these 1v1 situations were for players who were grabbing the diffuse and whatnot but uh, I was kind of surprised by the I wouldn't say surprised but I, I really have enjoyed St. Marie Dumas search and yeah, story a absolutely. lot more recently yeah. beginning of the game it was hardcore B for like the first I don't know like four or five months of the yeah. game being out and now since the kind of patches have come through made it a little bit more viable the spawns have switched up the classes have obviously changed and now it makes the A bomb site a lot more viable but I really enjoyed that last search and story that, that was very I would say competitive, it's it's fair to say, between both of these squads. And I, now I'm really looking forward to seeing how the CTF obviously goes between both of these squads. Uh, both teams possess a, a very solid AR player. And as far as the first respawn went, it was really the guys from C2C, especially Major Maniac, finished off 43-22 and 22 versus Brack. ARs, very important when it comes down to CTF, especially on a map like Flak Tower. Communication has to be on point, player counting, etc. The winner of this game is going to rely on who has the better communication. You know, I love that we're already in our first round, and already we're down to the third map, yeah. CTF, right? So a lot is on the line here. The nitty gritty. Tournament. And this is a big tournament, too. 16 teams signed up for this tournament. Oh, yeah. So, that, I mean, that's really impressive. We have some really right? solid teams tonight. I'm looking solid to teams. It. Mazer C2C, two of them already that we're seeing. <laughs> it's I kind mean, of unfortunate that we're actually going to lose one of these teams in just the first round. It, it absolutely is, but it shows you, and I think it's going to set the pace for the rest of the tournament, absolutely. especially for the teams going further in to play either one of these teams, right? But, hey, anything can happen, but already CTF, you're seeing it now. We'll see what's going to go down. You know, a bit slow off the start. Only reason being is because they're trying to get some positions, but Major already last alive here. But fortunately for him, the team of uh, Mazer isn't too far forward. Ooh. Look at that. That was a nice little turn on there for me. Maniac. Making him look like a corporate or a corporal. What, what, what's, the, what's the term exactly? A corporal in the, in the military? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> what is it exactly? What? A corporal. A corporal is like, what well, depends. It, is anyways. a corporal higher than a major? Um, uh, no, major is definitely higher than a corporal. Then I'm right in that situation. No, no, no. A, a corporal is enlisted. In I said corporate at first, and then I was trying to make a joke, <laughs> and I was like, corporal <laughs> kind of works actually in this situation. But either way, though, <laughs> Brack casually has the flag in his hands. He's rocking everything, but. And they are, of course, as soon as I say that, yet again, another wrong saying. Bar in hand now, but has the ability to kind of send this flag, capture home, also finds the kill with his flag in his hands. This is a big play. Oh, good But stop. he ends up getting taken down. Major Maniac has to go for no. what he thought was a free and open return. Not at all the case. That's where the enemy spawns. And how does Jet League just got behind enemy lines? Not exactly sure. But back and forth we go. Of course, a early flag capture comes in. But if you're Major Maniac in that situation, a little bit unfortunate. Maybe you want to be a little bit more aware of your surroundings in that situation. Like, hey, the enemy's going to be spawning here any moment. Yes. I doubt this flag is as free as I think. It's a little bit too quiet, essentially, in that situation. But either way, flag comes forward and props to Brack, right? Starts off 4-1. and one. Nearly had streaks. So close yet again. But no cigar. You know, I, I, I want to see... The team of C2C slow it down a little bit, start getting their composure, locking down those lanes. Because one thing that I've seen them struggling with, they've been sending players right lane, maybe to left lane, but they're all individuals and they're easily getting outgunned by the team of Mazer. And the reason being is because Mazer has more teams collectively or more players collectively to take them out and, and kind of collapse on them. But as I say that though, Drama does pick up the flag. He's going to be running it. And this could be a great capture. It looks like he might four, be home Zapdius. free. Yep, Zapdius does take it. Could have a little standoff here. Oh, Some gunfights going down. No. Zapdius does drop, and that's going to leave Drama free to get an easy capture. Now it's going to be 1-1. One, one. Good stuff from him, and he's all streaked out. Yeah, props right to Drama and Co. from C2C. They kind of play the numbers correctly. They had that 2v1 advantage. I know, uh, I think it was... Um, I think it was actually uh, Fatal, who was in the, the base for his team, trying to kind of play a little bit of defense. Gets a little bit of unfortunate timing. Obviously, Drama makes a, a very solid run, has his teammates watching over the cuts, and going on that streak, right? He's the one player who you wanted to stay alive. Obviously, props to the guys on C2C for giving him the flag because he has the ability to earn those a little bit easier. Makes a nice flag run, like it has his teammates watching the cuts, and just like that, C2C are sitting pretty. They tie the game up. They've got streaks in their favor. And a minute 30 left in this first half. They're looking pretty solid. 
Yeah, C2C now trying to go into damage control and stop the, the team of Mazer from taking the flag. If the flag does get taken, though, player tried to take him out. He does get one. Fatal now is going to be running this flag. Jet Li looks like he could pose a problem, and he doesn't get away as Hitman actually comes from behind. That's going to be an easy return. So we're seeing some kills going down. Still 1-1. One, one. Looks like the team of C2C is going to be pushing for the Mazer's flag. Drama, yeah. once again, Drama's alone. See, I don't, I, don't, I don't like the fact, I mean, he's just being a nuisance in there. But I want to see the rest of the team push forward, and there's I, four down. I think the reason why he uses, or he kind of rushes that a little bit, is because he used the streak. It's like, okay, I want to try to get at least like a little bit of bang for my buck sure, in that situation. Sure. Like, at least give me a kill or so. But, like I said, a little bit uh, of an unnecessary push. His team doesn't really have map control. And things are obviously kind of reset themselves. But two kills, back to back, of course, we're talking about the 7.5 respawn delay. That's going to allow the boys from Mazer get a little more comfortable in the enemy base, but just mm, like that, four that. players yep. fall. Welcome to the kill feed, as now with 28 <laughs> seconds left, the full man rush from C2C, I and like perfect this. timing from Drama. As like soon as these players spawn up, they have a glide bomb at their backside, and nearly say goodbye to Brack with the uh, recent spawn up. You do have a little bit more health, so that doesn't take anyone out necessarily, but Major Maniac mm. coming through huge. Drama, though, the last man alive yet again. And back-to-back -back streak usage, it looked pretty good for them. But you talk about the end of the game, double streaks, nothing to really call from it, nothing to really show for it. You know, I, I, I really loved how C2C was trying to push that flag, but I also love how Mazer shut it down as well. Yeah. Good plays from both sides. It could have been really, really nasty for the team of Mazer, but they managed to counter that. Still 1-1. Going into it, we're switching up sides. I think both both sides, both teams have been playing considerably well. I would say Mazer has the better setup overall. I would like to see C2C lock down those lanes a little bit better. But overall, slaying-wise and just how they're playing, hey, it's, it's pretty even. It's pretty phenomenal. But Drama, I mean, he's definitely been shining here. Oh, he's yeah. currently 12-6. and six. He, got, he de is the only person to have a flag capture other than Zapius from the team of Mazer. They're going into the second side. We'll see how they're going to set up. Let's see if they start locking those lanes down. Definitely, of course. Early map control wanting to be granted from either side oh, as Drama so nearly nice. said hello to this third, but Major Maniac yet again being the kind of centerpiece for this roster as far as the AR is considered. He ends up getting taken down, so the final final pillar, rather, of that setup is taken down, and Jet Li having a little bit of a slower start, rather, toward this capture the flag has been a major performer in both the hardpoint and the search and destroy. But we talk about, man, the one guy, when he needs to perform, he does. Thankfully, now he's got a drama to kind of step up in his place along with Major Maniac. We talk about the slang differential. You've really got three solid players coming through from Major. Really two showing themselves yep. right now in drama. And Major Maniac, Jet Li, 6 and 12. Hitman, 4 and 10. That's very uncharacteristic for a player is. like Hitman. Been watching him play a lot throughout World War II. This guy is known for putting up numbers, and I'm not sure if maybe just his role is, is a little bit uncomfortable. This is a, a very new team that's just formed probably within a few hours or so. <laughs> so uh, role probably not feeling the best at the moment, right, but right. we'll see how things obviously progress. Both teams wanting to grab the early advantage. No one getting it as of yet, but three players following. Yet again, Major Maniac in the back lines. Have to hold off this push, getting ready to come in here from the boys on MG. Let's see what's going to happen here. Big push coming down. Brack picking up a huge kill there on Mazer. Nice Another kill. kill there from Brack. Four down. Four down. And that that's should be good. Be, that, that, should, that, sh that should be an easy flag. I don't think anybody uh, on the team. Well, they, they, they did get the side spawn, though. And then just like, yeah. That, that's the, gonna, but I don't think they it. have streaks in order to shut that down. And Fatal is going to get that capture. Well, Drama does have Drama, yeah, a he, four well, strike, but yeah. he dies a little bit too late. So doesn't have the ability to make that one worth his right. while. But. Thankfully, they do get one player. That was probably the one player that you want to be a live Major Maniac on that side spawn. One of the best AR shots probably in this entire lobby, right? So has the ability a little bit too late, but great kind of overall drop for Mazer, getting the numbers in their favor and responding very well on it. Brack, six kills in a row, 10 as a team for a short time. As it looks like they're just trying to kind of work the map in their favor. They're not interested in rushing right now. They just want to get the map at their fa in their sure. favor. Map kind of control, rather. And that's what you should do. And Brack has the ability player just at his flank. If he can find this kill, earns the glide bomb. And this for late game is huge right now for Mazer, right? They have the advantage and in this game. Almost. One more kill, and he's got full streaks to rock with. I mean, you talk about, right, streaks can earn or can end perfection. Sure. The ability to kind of uh, get out of jail free card when it comes to the capture the flag. The enemy has your... You know, kind of flag toward the end of your the opposite base. You rock up the, the you know fighter pilot, whatever it may be, as the turn on nearly comes in there from Jet Li. But it works out so well for your team. So right now, Brack and Co. They have the advantage. They've got streaks at their side. They're feeling pretty good right now. 
You know, I, I've said it, and I've said it, I'll keep saying it, but when it comes down to it, I mean, this game really has come down to Mazer getting that lane control. And, you know, they haven't been overzealous trying to push forward. They're not being too aggressive, which I really like. They're waiting for their teammates to push up. They're controlling their lanes. And wow. now we're seeing some strikes coming in. Brack picks up a two-piece, the third one on Fatal, but you know what? He'll take it. We saw three players drop down. Brack being really aggressive here. I like this, though. I right. do like this, especially late game. You're already a flag up. Why not be a nuisance? And, and, and he's 25 and 11. Like You can't complain <laughs> with that. Come at yeah, me more. I, like, that's amazing. I'm, <laughs> I'm totally cool with it. But, man, I've been watching this guy Brack play countlessly throughout World War II. He is by far one of my favorite semi-pro player ARs that we have in the entire game right now. And he is showing it off. Didn't have the strongest hard point game. Grant, I think he goes like negative three or something. Major Maniac really shows him up in that overall AR uh, category, but really what it matters the most. He is rising to the occasion over double positive as it currently stands, but really being a major difference maker, those streaks, right, are, are just an overall huge confidence booster for sure. Mazer. As the time starts to tick away, it makes them only feel even more confident with having the lead. And like I said, that get out of jail free card whenever you need to use it. You know, I... I I really wish I could have seen Jet Lee and Hitman perform better. Hitman was trying to that last ditch effort to get that flag. With 50 seconds remaining, they'll have a, a, maybe at least two more tries. But Jet Lee pushing forward, and once again, it's just all individual performance pushing yeah. forward, and, and, and just there's no team support there. You saw Major trying to get that right side for Jet Lee, but it was already too late. I think if they would have been more, and but you just said they just formed a couple of hours ago, right? So obviously the team chemistry may not be there, the Ooh, strats strike, may not though. be there, but. Overall, no, hey, you know, it, okay. it, it's a bit tough, but we do see uh, three are going to go down, but drama is going to get dropped. Fatal's as well. lost a life. Fatal has to go big, but thankfully his teammates are spawning up very, very quickly. Goodbye to Jet Li. And here comes the last ditch effort from C2C. Major Maniac and Hitman both up. Hitman falls to the hands of Brack. Who else? And now it's up to Major himself. There it is. And just like that, he will fall. Gizmo will get his revenge. And just like that, what seemed to be. A situation, right? They lose the hard point. It's sure. really close, 50 point differential. Right. Search and destroy goes down to around 11. But the CTF, this to me is where Brack really shows up. We took at the overall scorecard. He finishes off 29 and 15, nearly double positive. Yes. When his back has been against the wall in back to back maps overall, really got to give massive credit to the guys on Mazer. But we talked about their ability to come back and search and destroy in CTF after losing a hard point. Is normal. We, I've it been is. casting over them play or playing quite a bit. I know sure. in our last tournament casting yeah. together, they end up having an unfortunate hard point loss. They respond back very well in the search and destroy. And I believe in that exact same series, they end up clutching out a, a very close yeah. CTF on this exact map of Flag Tower. So nothing out of the ordinary for this team. But uh, it's fair to say Brack gets the last lap versus uh, three force rather of that old team being drama. His most recent teammate on forfeit and Jet Li and Hitman and that prior Vex team. So Brack showing off pretty well and definitely having the last laugh as he walks away to the sunset, double positive. <laughs> you know, we, we saw a big change between uh, C2C whenever it came to that hard point. We saw a lot of confidence, really aggressive, getting those kills. Yeah. CTF just wasn't happening. And, you know, the thing is, is each one of those players on C2C are phenomenal players. Hitman and Jet oh, yeah. Lee, they struggled in CTF. Yeah. But honestly, it's not that they played terribly bad. It's just the fact is they were putting themselves in disadvantaged you know, positions. They were pushing forward by themselves. And if you're pushing forward by yourself, I mean, in any game mode, it's, it's a bit tough especially when you're going against the entire team that's locking right. down the flag. So it's not that they played bad. It's just, unfortunately, the team just couldn't get together and just get those lanes locked down and push forward and, and really just get the choke points. And I think that's what killed them in the end. But yeah. overall, phenomenal series. Yeah. Mazer, they're going to move on. C2C, such a great team. I'm sad they're already getting knocked out. You said that, mentioned that yeah. earlier. Two great teams already played off against each other. And unfortunately, C2C is going to be out of it. But Mazer is going to be a powerhouse team for any team to play. But it is a stacked uh, ladder going in. You guys actually can view the ladder i think do we have we might have commands here's the ladder right here wester and Ma mazer gaming as, as we know mazer gaming just took took that i guess they're going to be going against uh, the team of whoa we'll whoa whoa we'll see what's going down i love the names that some some of these guys pick man. yeah pretty solid i'm not gonna lie <laughs> lemurs uh big beams what, what West is, Coast. I, I forget lemurs is like it's like african lemurs i think is their name or, or something yes, like that is, yes. their, is their official team name yes, but one thing that i really want to touch on very fast is we'll have major of course facing off against western and all, of course all the other matches mm. and quarters but one thing that i think really makes a huge difference in this capture the flag is the ability you talk about major three-fourths of this team has been competing for the longest time i remember casting probably like three or four months ago, and I was like, wow, this Mazer team, they've been in a lot of our tournaments, and they've yep. consistently been playing like kind of week after week after week. And, of course, they add Brack to the team. Yeah. 
And there were some moments from C2C that I think what really kind of makes them lose that capture the flag, because I think it's important to notice because it is a very high-intensity match. This is by far, I think, the best round one game as far as the overall skill is considered, which obviously shows in the series count. But one really makes one really makes a difference is that you, you got to that point. C2C, this is a, this is a kind of a thrown-together roster. I'm not sure if this is a, a, a solid team or not. I'd imagine a lot of the squads who play in our matches who are kind of known semi-pros usually trying to form squads. Sure. They want to get that quality of practice, not just play for, you know, giggles and whatnot. But Mazer, right, three-fourths this team has been competing for at least a few months. Few months. You had yeah. a guy like Brack who at least knows prior strategies of drama. He's been playing with Hitman and Jet Li throughout a lot of this title as well. So they already have a, a huge advantage coming into the series based off of chemistry, based yeah. off of teamwork, and the knowledge of the other team itself. So, yeah. I, and I think there were some moments from C two C where we go back. We talk about Jet Li, Hitman. They don't have the strongest games by any stretch of the imagination. Drama has some good moments. He wastes the streaks. Maybe a little bit of overly aggressive play. If the communication, the chemistry is probably there, maybe they know that Drama is a little bit hyper aggressive with wanting to use streaks. They say, "Hey, man, hold off a little bit. Let's wait till they get out of their spawns. So they don't have as much health." Right. And they kind of go from there. So I think, really, when you look back at this search and destroy, this caps the flag. A round 11 victory, a one-fly differential to capture the flag. This looks pretty good if you're a C2C on paper facing sure, off sure. against a team who's been together for a very long time. Sure. Of course, excluding Brack. But I think you really got to give credit to both of these teams. Of course, C2C as well. Would have liked to see them advance farther in this tournament, but they do face off against Mazer pretty early, and they do get taken down. But a lot of awesome matches remain. I I'm very excited to see how the rest of the night goes. Without a night, where do I fall?